Hi, everybody. Okay, now we're moving on to part three um, of this So Long, So With Me series. I just have my notes here. So with um, part three, what we're going to be going over is we're going to sew the inseam and then we're going to reinforce that inseam um, in just the crotch curve um, area. Um, then we're going to baste um, the side seams and then we're going to fit um, as we sew. So we're gonna base the side seams with, you know, that's the longest stitch on your sewing machine. And then we're gonna try it on um, and see if that fit is nice or if we need to adjust the side seams. Um, so, you know, I always say never come in more than an inch um, on the side seams. Um, and then if you still feel like you still need some um, help with the pants after you come in on that inch, um, then we can start working from the middle and you know I'll go over some tips um, for that as well. So we'll be covering a lot in, in part three of, of this um, sew along. And then after that, um, if you have any, um, if you did come in on the side seams and you know you like what you know after that fit and you like it, and then we're gonna cut down that side seam to um, no more than um, a half an inch. Well, no, you can do five eighths if you like, um, or um, a half an inch. Um, leave that as your uh, side seam uh, seam allowance, okay? Um, and then we're going to complete the side seam pockets. So once we do that, then we're gonna finish off the side seam raw edge so it looks nice and professional. Um, and then we're gonna permanently stitch the side seam, okay? And then at this point, you should have a nice shell um, of your pants. So you should have the back, the front, the fly, side seam pockets. Um, so at this point, Everything in that area should be looking nice um, and how you want it to fit. And so now we're going to be using, um, attaching the waistband and then the flounce, um, you know, at the bottom of the leg. So um, you're going to have to remember if you took off anything along the side seam, you're going to have to remember what you took off at the waist area and what you took off at the joining where the flounce is going, at the hem basically. Um, of the pants where it is right now um, because you're going to have to make those adjustments to those pattern pieces um, when we get there. Okay, so like I said, it's a lot that we're going to do in part three of this Sew With Me Sew Along series. So, so let's get started. Here's a little bit about how I do my Sew With Me Sew Along techniques. I'm going to put it on the website and I will reference it in the sew along itself. So for example, we just did, we're working on a pair of pants that has a fly front. So when we get to that portion in the sew along, I'll do a little bit of it, you know, and instructions in the sew along itself, but then I'm going to refer you over to the website to go ahead and look at that video, that particular video, look it over, you know, um, Study it, do your own sample if you want, because you know I'm big on that technique binder. So go ahead and you know and do that. And then once you get a good hang of um what that technique is, then come back on to the, the sew along itself and do that particular technique with the sew along. So that way we both kind of benefit. Um you still get the instruction of the actual sew along step by step of how to do a particular thing. Um, but I, it's less editing on my part because, uh, like I said, I'll mention it in the sew along itself, but then I'll refer you over to the website to actually find that particular technique, um, and go ahead, review it, look at it. Um, and then once you master it or enough to where even so long, you know, at the same time and, and install it in that particular sew along that you're, that you're doing at that time. Um, so hopefully that will be okay for, for you because I think it's a win-win so for When you go over to the website, there is a nominal fee for the technique because what I did was I searched the internet, I searched books, I searched everything um, in order to find the easiest, most convenient um, method, easiest to learn, um, and fastest method in order to do a technique. And I only show you one technique. So what I did was 
you know, kind of meshed things that I found from here, there, that I thought, oh, that works good, that works good, that didn't work, um, and kind of just put it all together and meshed it into, you know, my technique, which is, could be um, a combination of two or three different techniques, uh, two, three, or four um, techniques all in one. Um, so what you're get what you're getting is basically my I'll research. Give the example of an invisible zipper. If you look for an invisible zipper online, you'll probably find four different ways to do an invisible zipper. Really, <laughs> and so and even honestly, the same instructor, you know, I find would do, and it could be just learning. You know, they did it one time, and you know, when they were first learning, and then as they progressed. They did another another way right so but on their website they'll have two different ways of how they did an invisible zipper so what i did was look at all of you know all the um different techniques the the people that i like to go to um and meshed it together and said this is the best way um in order to do that particular technique um and then i give instructions so not only do you get get the video but you get written instructions um, on how to do that particular technique. But again, it's because of my, the time that I took to research it and to actually um, research it one uh, and film it um, and, you know, meshing it down to get that one particular way to do something. Um, and then actually the written instructions. So that's why each one of the techniques that I have on the website is between two and three, depending on, um what it is and some of them are free um as well um just wanted to let you guys know that up front that it is a nominal fee but it is well worth it okay 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 enough of that boring stuff back to the sew along one more thing before we get back to that sew along don't forget to like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos okay back to the sew along we are starting part three and we are going to be doing um, fitting for the most part of this one, of this um, portion of the video. So what you want to do is put right sides together, front to back. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew this, the inseam first at the correct um, seam allowance. So commercial patterns are typically five eighths. Um, so sew this at five eighths. What I do with one of the seam allowance is point it one way. The other one, I point it the other way. So when it's together, it's layered like that instead of all, all one way like that, which creates more bulk, okay? So go ahead and pin um, along the inseam and you do have one notch here. You can see a notch um, to go ahead and line up. So pin along your entire uh, inseam and you are going to um, sew that inseam at whatever seam allowance it is, five eighths probably. Uh, sometimes I do mine at um, a half an inch if I want a more looser um, fit, but this one I'm going to do at um, five eighths of an inch per the instructions. Okay, do that and come back. sewing the inseam here. Okay. Um, because we are doing fit as you sew, um, we're not going to finish this inseam just yet. Um, hopefully we won't have to take away from here, you know, to make things fit. Um, but just in case you want to have that option. Um, if you want to, you can, um, instead of doing a permanent stitch here, you can do a basting stitch to make your life easier. Uh, but typically it's fine to do your regular stitch on your inseam and do all your adjustments on your side seam. Okay. Um, just um, hold off on surging that just yet your inseam. Now what you want to do, you want to pin your side seams together. Okay. So these are your side seams. So I can put it this way. Your side seams here. 
um, and you want to pin that. Um, you want to make sure that the hem is even, so you pin there first, okay? So you always pin from the hem up when it comes to pants or skirts, things of that nature. Um, so go ahead and pin that. You do have some notches here. Thank goodness my notches are matching up <laughs> on this one at least. Um, and here's another one that matches up. Great. Um, so go ahead and pin from the bottom up. From your hem up to your waistline. Okay. Okay, so I have finished pinning. So pin from, started at the hem, made my way all the way up to the waistline. Um, now what you wanna do, now remember for commercial patterns, it's five eighths, right? Um, but typically what I do is start within that five eighths um, since I'm fitting as I'm sewing. I typically start at a quarter inch and then I move up to a half an inch. So I start at a quarter inch, if that's fine, I'll leave it there. Um, I move up to a half an inch um, if it's too baggy or I want it fit fit it. So um, I move up to a half an inch. Um, and usually what I do is um, do the same amount for the entire side. You know, you, you know, if you want to do, you know, a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here, or half an inch here. You can most definitely just take your uh, hip ruler if you have one and try to match up those um, those points, um, measuring points that you you want along the side seam. But, you know, I'm trying to make it easy on myself. So usually, um, you know, what I'll do is just I'll go in the same amount for the entire length. So, again, I will be starting at a quarter inch. And I would try on the pants and you can try them on wrong side out, you know, just like that. Or you can flip them uh, right side out so you can see exactly how it would look. Either one will work. Um, now, remember, um, because we're fitting as we sew, these will be basting stitches. And that is the longest stitch on your sewing machine. So they will be basting stitches, the longest length on your sewing machine. And again, I start at a quarter. You can start however you like. Um, but I just find it easier. So say I started at five eighths, right? I'm like, ooh, that's too tight. And I needed to let it out. So within that seam allowance, then I would have to take the time to unpick um, all of those stitches, um, the entire length, right? Versus if I started within the seam, al uh, seam allowance and I was like, oh, I can take it in some more. I don't have to take those out, right? I can surge them off, I can cut it off um or what have you it's just easier to do it that way i found after trial and area having to pluck out <laughs> um you know the the stitches make sure that it's just basting stitches though okay along both side seams try it on once you got the fit that you like around the hip area on down was still very baggy um so um Basically, what I did was standing in the mirror, I pinched, this is the hip area where I thought it was really baggy. I pinched, basically, I did three quarters of an inch and I made little dots, as you can see, all the way down to um, the hem, okay? And I did take it in just a little bit at the waist by half an inch, okay? It'll end up being a full inch. Okay. So if I line it up with my mark here, with the very top and then try to line it up with me other dots here i can line up one but then it starts to really uh really starts to curve in the further that i go down so i don't so this starting at the very top here um won't work so it seems like it's more of a uh instead of a, a really rounded curve it's more of i'm just going to start using more of the straight edge so i'll just go up a few few inches and try again so now i'm starting this looks like a five yeah i'm starting at the five and seeing if i can line up some line up one oops there and move it all up so if i do it that way starting at five I can line up a good three. So 
um, I will be using this one because it's lining up basically from the top all the way down to really it'll line it'll hit this one down here okay so five is is the good number and again i'm using the outside edge so what i'll do now is just um take my marking tool whatever tool that you like and um mark oopsie mark that new curve remembering to hit those dots all right and if you off some it is totally fine and try to go back to where you're hitting is that a five right So where I was hitting most of those dots. Okay, and if you need to come down a little bit because you need some more of that. Because at this point, you'd just be using the end part um, of the ruler and just move it down so you can hit all of it. And you're just using the straight and make sure to hit it all. All righty, so. You can see that new line. Okay. So that started blending again from the waist. Where are we at? From the waistline. That blue line right here. Waistline all the way down. Okay. Um, and what you're going to do at this point, and my pins are on the other side, but just pin it like regular, and then you're still going to baste it, okay? And try it on again, make sure that it fits. And you want to do um, your other side seam the same way. You should have made your dots, you know, the same. And then just remember what you started off here. We started off at the waistline at a five. Um, so start the same way so it'll be the same curve on the other side. All right, so do that and come back for that should be your final fitting. Everything should be okay at that point. Okay, so this was after me fitting and this is the pants wrong side out. Um, this is the only thing that makes totally bad lighting in here. But it's excess fabric here. This is me pinching the excess. If I turn to the side, you can kind of see me pinching. It's like that much can, a half an inch, four inch right here, can be taken out. All right, so this is simplicity pattern. Um, this is the one we just did, 8957. And this is just me comparing the McCall's um, center front uh, curve here, okay? So first things first, sorry, I'm just trying to... So remember, you line up the center front against, you know, a ruler or whatever you have available. I just like this black because it's easy to see. And so what you're doing is line up the center front and then once it starts going over into the black, you make your mark. Okay, so this is center front and as you see it started going over to the black right there. So I made my mark right here. Okay, so that's when it really starts to curve. So you want to try to get the start of the curve. So that's how you do it. Okay, um, now you're going to put this mark against that curve. And you want to see how much um, the center front opens um, at the top away from that to see how much it's slanted, right? And as you can see, it doesn't slant, very, it doesn't even slant a quarter of an inch. So this is basically straight. I have to remember, let's check this rise before we even get started. If I need to add, you know, more fabric to this rise, um, 
center front part before the rise. Um, I would do that. And again, if it's over half an inch, if it's a half an inch, just go ahead and take it from the, just the front. But if it's over a half an inch, so the other one was three quarters of an inch, but if it's over half an inch, you wanna take half of it from the front on the side seams and half from the back on the side seams to accommodate the extra that you're adding to this front. So from the bottom of your fly extension to the inseam is your crotch curve, okay? So this is basically where a lot of the stuff is gonna be happening. <laughs> All right, so first thing is along uh, the inseam, you wanna take out no more than a half an inch. All right. Okay, so a half an inch, about right there. All right, and you see where this mark is down here? Um, you want to fade it back into those markings. So what is that? So sometimes you may not have that mark. Um, between five and six inches, okay? Um, into the inseam. And as you see, this inseam uh, is, you know, like an angle, right? So preferably you want to keep that angle and just mimic. So with mine, it started right at the top. So that's what I'll be doing. So blending it back out to there. Basically, step one, we'll be taking that off. All right. Here's my paper. All right. So, that's how much you took off there. Now, now remember, because the issue is right in here, or really right up underneath here. So from here, here, not not typically the, the bottom part, but in here was the excess fabric. Okay, so next what we want to do is, um, I'll say about the middle, in the middle of the bottom of your curve, to your inseam, gotta find the middle. That's the middle, right? About right here. And then you wanna go in about a quarter of an inch. So most you wanna go in about a quarter of an inch. Sorry, it's not in the middle right there. And so you want to kind of blend from that top, hit that middle, blend back to, let's do that again so you can see, blend from the top of the curve, so that'll be zero, come out to the one fourth, blend back into your end seam, and that'll be zero, okay? Most definitely you can freehand it. But if you have a ruler, let the ruler do the work. And what does, this does, well, let me go back. This one right here um, takes off excess going horizontal, okay? And this is only on the front. Um, this right here um, scoops out excess fabric that you don't need and that hopefully will eliminate a lot of that extra fabric um, right underneath your tummy. Okay. So 
So remember zero, zero, hitting that quarter. Best you can get it. Uh, that's pretty good. Zero, zero, hitting that quarter. Okay, so that is scooping out excess fabric. Um, to hopefully take out some of that excess fabric in the middle. Um, but we don't want to, you know, shorten this or um, mess with that. That messes up the shape. And again here, um, you don't want to mess with that any more than you already did. Because remember, the max we want to take off is a half an inch. Notch, so I'm just putting that notch back. That's all I'm doing here. I'm about to cut away that notch. And I can see. Now, see where they have this lengthen and shorten line? Just use that line. <laughs> um, um, if it's not, just come come down maybe an inch, two inches at the most um, from the end of your uh, extension here, okay? But if you have the length and the shortened line, just use it because that's kind of what it's for, right? Now, remember, we will be doing, making a, um, a cut here because we want to close this, all right? And we will be doing a uh, pivot point here, which means we will not cut through this, okay? Because we don't want to change the length of the side seam because that will affect the back pattern as well. What you want to do is cut along, cut along that shortened lengthen line all the way to the side seam, but don't cut through it. Because it's tissue paper, if you want, you can put like a piece of tape. That way, you know, a little bit more stability. Just a little tiny piece. close and not cut all the way through. Okay, afraid it's a hinge. I can even probably get a little closer. That's okay. I'm happy with that. Now, um, I think it was a, was it a quarter, quarter, half an inch? Yeah, I think it was a half an inch. It was a quarter, quarter that I pinched. Put that together as a half an inch. So, what I want to do here is close this. See how this is open? That's adding, and I'll be adding more fabric. You don't need that. Now, if you need more fabric, this is how you do it. <laughs> but we want to take away fabric. So we're going to close it um, a half an inch, right? So let's measure a half an inch. Half an inch would be right there. And what you're going to do is just take this and Move my hand so you can see. Take that, another hinge, and this is the mark that I made. Hopefully, you can see it. The mark that I made, and you want to close, bring it on top of there, right? And tape it. And what this does is take away the excess fabric that was just at this crotch curve. Thank you. 
is a ball of tape. So this way, it does not affect your side seam at all. The length of your side seam does not change. We're just taking out the excess fabric. Tape it in the back too. Make sure that's secure. Um, and if you had a, a little um, jagged edge or anything like that right there, you just smooth it out, but I don't have any. And so those are the um, that you can do if you have excess fabric underneath your belly like I had. Um, it's good to, to write what you did um, so you will remember. We're moving on to doing the side seam pockets. Okay, so let's just move it this way. This is along the side seam. All right, and you may have, if you had to cut off your, um, you know, sides like I did, you may have to remark for where your pockets go. Um, and we already prepped our pockets here. Um, you know, the curve. And so we're gonna place it so that it is right sides together. Okay. You place in your pockets right sides together. And then we are going to um, secure them. at a quarter inch or three eighths, but I usually do a quarter just cause it's just easier to find on my sewing machine. Um, the pocket to uh, your front and your back pieces. Remember it's right sides together. Uh, so do all four pieces and then I will finish the raw edge. So however you wanna do it, I'm going to serge mine, you can zigzag it. So go ahead and do that and come back. So. Um, at this point, you should have sewn your pockets. Uh, here's one. Um, and what you want to do is press your uh, seam allowance to, toward your pocket. Um, and I understitched um, the front pockets. Okay. And here's a close up of the understitching. It's probably about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. Um, you need assistance on what understitching is. See my website. Um, what we're going to do is put right sides together for basically everything. Okay. So the pants, front and back pattern pieces, and the pockets. All right. And what we're going to do here is... Um, match up your your pocket um, markings on both sides okay um, and what you're gonna do is starting of course at the bottom okay because we always start at the hem right so we're going to do a regular stitch with other whatever seam allowance you decide to do remember commercial is five eighths but you can do you know a half an inch if that's what you want to do I will be doing um, a half an inch uh, with mine so from the hem on to the first dot to the first uh, dot at the pocket um, you're going to cut your threads and then you're going to um, skip over to this top notch up here um, start again and uh, go to the top. Okay, so this will be a space left open um, and you're going to backstitch it both of your your dots here Okay, and then when you finish that you want to stitch around Stitch around your pocket um, All the way to the end here um, and you can go even to um, Your stitch line that you have that you're going to create here. Okay,
Okay, so uh, side seam along with the pocket has been sewn. And what you want to do is clip um, into the back seam allowance here. Um, that way you can press this open. Okay, what you want to do is bring your pocket to the front. And what you're going to do is base along, base the pocket to the front of your pants, front only, okay? And what you're doing is, let me get you in focus, where we at? <laughs> there we go. Um, and you're just gonna secure it here. That way it just won't be flopping around, you know, going to the back to the front. Um, and that's it for this, um, this sew along. All right, everybody, until next time. Thank you everybody for watching.